Well, hello, 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 hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of On the Cutting Room Floor. I'm your host, Antonio Ray Harvey. Tony Tony Ray Harvey, my nickname. Let's go with that. Uh, just a beautiful, splendid night. So let's just jump right into it, okay? That, that, these two dudes, DeMar DeRozan and De'Aaron Fox, are dangerous. <laughs> They are dangerous. When you think about that word clutch, and it's going to be talked about a long time and all through the season, you better recognize game. These two are bringing it. They are bringing it. Okay? Sacramento Kings. Sacramento Kings. One tonight in overtime. 127-118 on the road against the Phoenix Suns. 127 118. Okay, the game ended in regulation. 111, 111. A tie. But I'm trying to tell you that fourth quarter, Debo scored 16 points in that fourth quarter. Okay? And not only that, we did get a a a a, a, magnet, a, 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 magnet, a magnificent <laughs> timely tip in by Keegan Murray, the third year man out of Iowa. The team is six and four right now in the first 10 games. All right. Probably should be eight and two, okay? But they're six and four, so they don't want sixty percent of the games. I do think these wins totals is going to tick up a little bit more in this next stretch. All right, they have one more game on the road in San Antonio. This is the front end of a back to back. They play the second part of it in San Antonio tomorrow. So if they can get that win and come back home, they will be eight and four, and then they will start a four game. Home stand. So, man, I'm hey, to go back to that game that they lost the other night to the Los Angeles Clippers. I uh, that was one of those losses. I out of these ten games, I did not like. I, I didn't like the game that the overtime loss in Toronto, but that was a diff- of course that was a different scenario because they were on that four game road trip and they had a wild. You know, a traveling schedule, blah, blah, blah. They still should have won that game. But that Clippers game upset me more than anything because, yes, they shot three for 26 from the free throw line, but they still had opportunities to win that game. This is the Sacramento Kings. I mean, in that second, that fourth quarter of that Clippers game, they were down. They came back to cut it to two. Okay. Then they lost track of uh, the Clippers again, and they were down by a few points. But they came back and they cut it to four points. And then the Kings clo- I mean, the, the Clippers closed out on something like a 8-7-8 eight, eight run uh, to end the game and stuff. But the fact that they were coming back to make an effort to win that game, they were just so close. It was just pissing me off. Of course, the shooting was horrible. It was horrendous. Uh, ooh, I mean, there's so much I can say about that. But, hey, they popped back tonight on the three-pointers. Let's see, what did they do tonight on those three-pointers? They were 11 for 37, 29.7%, much better than 11.5% that they shot the other night. But tonight, hey, on the road, game on the line, I'm just loving to see these two uh, young men, uh, these two men do what they do in the fourth quarter and in overtime if it extends to that frame. But they, they are ready. It's go time for them. It is go time. It is go time. Okay? It is go time. I do want to add the fact that Mike Brown won his 100th game as a Sacramento Kings head coach. So it, going into, you know, his third season right now, he didn't climb up. He didn't hit uh, 100 fairly fast, you know, compared to what all the other co- coaches were doing uh, over the years. But we won't get all into that. Let's just get into this, you know, this magnificent win. DeMar had 34 points tonight. He was 14 to 25 shooting from the field, 56%. He only hit one three, his only attempt, and he made that. He was five or six from shooting from the free throw line, three rebounds, three assists, and one steal and only two turnovers in 42 minutes. So those minutes are still up there, but understand, tonight it wouldn't have been over 40 minutes at all if it wasn't for that over, that overtime period. And I don't care what you say, you know, when it gets to the overtime. We ain't talking about rusting 
nobody. You, you're going to play or you're going to file out, file out like DeMontis, uh, DeMontis Sabonis, who played 38 minutes, but he fouled out. You just, we, we're going to do what we're going to do to win that game. And if it's 44 minutes, 45 minutes in overtime, they need to be out there on that floor. All right. They are playing too many minutes. We're going to keep talking about that too, because now they're one man down. Malik Monk left the game early in the second quarter. I think at the 11:02 2 mark of the uh, second quarter. And I think he had twisted his ankle. So he didn't play in the rest of the game and stuff. So they could be out without uh, Malik Monk uh, for a little while. We don't know what the prognosis are, but we're going to get that pretty soon. And hopefully, you know, he, he'll return back to the court healthy uh, as soon as possible. But uh, until then, everybody knows rest of y'all going to step up. And this bench is kind of like weak and shoddy as it is. Y'all going to have to step up. You really going to have to play now. They need you. These starters need you. Okay, so Keegan Murray, who got that tip in with 3.9 seconds left in regulation in, in the fourth quarter, he, <laughs> you know, they probably could have won the game outright, but then on the next offensive possession for the Suns, he fouled Bradley Bill um, before the ball was uh, passed in from inbound. Bradley Bill gets a free shot at the free throw line. One shot, he makes it. Bradley, um, I don't know what's up. Uh, the Suns get the ball back. So they inbound the ball again. Booker gets the ball. He missed the, he missed the shot at, uh, at the buzzer. So it's 111-111 going in overtime. So that's what happened on that. So, but um, Keegan, Keegan, <laughs> oh, wow, would, Keegan had 14 points, 14 rebounds, one assist. He was 5'11", shooting from the field, two for six, shooting in three-point territory, he made both his free throws, but he had one offensive rebound, and guess what that was? The one that saved the night, <laughs> to be exact, okay? It really did save the night, because what? The Kings had fell back about nine points early in the fourth, fourth quarter, so they had to fight all the way back, you know, to um, get back in the game. And which they led at that one brief moment, boom, everything kind of worked out in the uh, overtime. But Keegan, my, uh, I myself, and I don't like to say I a lot in these certain cases, but when the question was asked to me, I was like, it's going to be good to see what he has added to his bag. And I'm talking about going back to the offseason. Okay, you know, he played with a USA team select over the summer. I think he played against uh, some, some great – he played with some great guys, including one who definitely going to be in the pros next year in Cooper Flag. But I think those type of experiences have been helping him too. And I also noticed that Mike Brown and his coaching staff, they challenged him. They challenged uh, Keegan Murray. They challenged him, Okay. You can do this. You can do that. You can be this. You can be that. And he's being all of that. Okay. He's definitely one of the best two-way players in the league. One of the top best two-way players in the league. And it's only going to get better than that from what I'm seeing like that. Uh, these last few games. He's opened it up. But he had, you know, already had five double-doubles out of the six games, uh, out of the ten games that they done played in already. Okay. That's pretty impressive. Really impressive. Okay. DeMontis, the Iron Man, as usual, I'm talking Lou Gehrig stuff here. 20 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, and uh, ugh, six, 6 turnovers. But think about those turnovers. He didn't turn the ball at, over at all in the fourth quarter. So that he knew he had to take better uh, care of the ball. We're talking about ball security here. He was 9 for 14 shooting from the field, so 64%. Uh, he missed all three of his shots in uh, three-point territory. He was two for three shooting from the free throw line. He had four offensive rebounds, okay? Uh, like I said, this was in uh, almost 39 minutes of court time. Of course, he did file out. Kevin Herter is getting back into his groove, folks. He's getting that swagger back. He's getting that confidence back, okay? He's so much reassured himself that he was going to have a good season, and he's – on the road to do that tonight, he had what he uh, 
because he had uh, Kevin had 14 points, three assists, and two steals in the first half. In the first half, he was five for nine shooting from the uh, floor, and he made four six in three point territory. We need that shooting from three point territory, and he is the sniper that we need to do that. At least one of the snipers that we need to do that. Okay, he ended up the game uh, with 17 points, seven rebounds, four assists, and three steals. This might be like the second or third time this season that he didn't have at least three steals in the game. So, obviously, <laughs> Mike Brown has reached this man. We need some defense out of you, okay? Because now you're coming up with seven rebounds on top of four assists. He was six for 12 shooting from the field. And once again, he made five three-pointers in 34 minutes. We need that from him. Darren Fox, man, he had a rough night shooting. But in overtime, after all that damage that uh, Debo was doing, DeMar DeRozan was doing, he came in there and closed it out. It's time to shut off the lights and go home. Time to put y'all to bed. We got to head on down. Uh, to We had to head over to San Antonio and try to get this win and stuff. Darren Fox was 10 for 23 shooting from the field. He didn't make any of his six shots in three-point territory. Uh, he made his only free throw. Had 11 rebounds, eight assists, and 21 points for the game. 11 rebounds, eight assists, and 21 points for the game in 40 minutes. And he did not have a good shooting night in the beginning. In the beginning. Because in overtime, he scored the King's last eight points. So you went on a one-man run with those eight points to close out the game. That was it. Uh, Debo scored the King's first eight points. And he was done uh, sc shooting for, uh, scoring for the night. De'Aaron takes over. So De'Aaron and DeMar DeRozan was the only one that scored in overtime. If I'm not mistaken. Yes, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They scored 16 points. They combined for 16 points in overtime, you know, to pull that out. The Suns only made five points. As a matter of fact, Bradley Bill scored all those points. He scored all, of four, all those five points that the Suns had in overtime. Bradley Bill. Great win. Great win. Perfect. But these two good cats right here, I'm telling you, man. I mean, they, I know Mark Jones had mentioned, yeah, they are lethal. This team, I mean, these, these two are dangerous. <laughs> I'm talking about dangerous on the court, especially when the game is on the line. Okay. I have to check it too, but I also, I, we know DeMar DeRozan gets to the line a lot. And I haven't checked these numbers. I'm not, the nerdy analytical guy that you know becoming more normal, being more common common in, in sports, especially uh basketball. But Debo not only gets to the free throw line at a high clip, he got he has to be somewhere ranked high in and ones. Okay, when a player get fouled and they get to go to the line and add another bucket, whether it's a uh, Two-point play, three-point play, he seems to be having this magical aura about him that or ability that he can not only score that basket, but he can draw a foul where he can get an extra bucket at the line, at the free throw line. I don't know where he stands on that. I am going to search, you know, track that down. You know, and, and piece that together. Uh, he only had one steal tonight, but also came across that. I think he's around 2.0 steals per game or maybe just a tenth of a point under that. And steals, DeMar DeRozan has over 1,200 steals in his career. He has over 1,200 steals in his career. Last season with the Bulls, he had 
90 steals on the season. And that was his highest output of his career. I think the lowest was his rookie year. 43 steals, 43 uh, train robberies. So I don't want to hear nothing about his defense. I really don't. I know something was said on the radio and it makes all the sense. We definitely want to see where uh, he fits in, at least on the defensive end, when the playoffs start, you know, next spring. But right now, I think he's holding his own for the Sacramento Kings. And the system has seemed like it's bearing itself out because the Kings do play with a team defensive scheme. And I think this person, uh, DeMar DeRozan, is getting comfortable in, in, in that situation. DeMar just making this team better all the way around, okay, on the court and off the court. The team is building up confidence. Yes, we done had some bad losses, okay? Four bad losses. I'm going to say four bad, excuse me, not four, four bad losses. I mean, um, actually, uh, three of the four, well, all four of those games were winnable. If you really look back at the, uh, uh, the scores, the final outputs, the final outcomes of those games. But it is what it is. They have four losses on the season. And in the first 10 games, they don't want six. So at 60%, they can keep building on this. They should be able to get San Antonio. Just don't go in there like we're going to get this win. Get this win. <laughs> Handle your business and get this win tomorrow night in San Antonio. And while we're at it, while we're talking about that, uh, I don't know. I haven't gotten the updates on it, but I, I do want to uh, – Wish Greg Popovich um, a fast rec fast recovery. I uh, heard he had, had a medical issue and he had to step away from the uh, coach's chair, uh, the sidelines, you know, to um, take care of that business. And I, <laughs> I don't, I, people don't understand about me because he he really gives me a, a rough times when I'm sitting in on the visitors, the opposing team locker room uh, press conference. Uh, specifically the San Antonio Spurs, and he, he's always saying something that would appear like it gets under my skin, but it doesn't. I really, I, he's one of my favorite coaches, okay? He's from East Chicago, okay? I'm from Illinois, and he definitely has that Illinois attitude as far as, well, I can't say that word on the air. I'm not going to be cussing on, on my podcast and stuff like that, but I do uh, wish a fast recovery for him and, and um, my prayers go out to him and, and, and his family. So we'll find out more about that tomorrow. And hopefully I can talk a little bit more about that after the game and stuff. But, hey, great win tonight, Sacramento Kings. I'm not really going to go too far into this. Uh, the first half, and you know, with all that happened, I think uh, the Kings' biggest lead in the game was about 10 or 11. And as I said before, the second half, the Suns' biggest uh, lead in the game was about 11 points, and it ended up being a um, overtime game, 111-111 in regulation, and then 127-118 with the final uh, results, final score. So I'm going to leave it at that, save some more time to um, come back and have another, another conversation, another digital commentary uh, session about this back-to-back game before they return back Wednesday and play the Phoenix Suns again. Great win. Great win. Keep this momentum. If they can keep this momentum going up, you know, yes, they can be 8-2 and two in this second stretch of 10 games. Yet, but they got to take care of their business at home with these home games. Or they could be 9-1, and one, okay? Or you could be 10-0. and zero. I, I feel that it's coming. We'll know more about what's happening with Malik, but I do feel like this is coming. It is coming. Great win tonight, though. Great win. Just stop it right there. I do want y'all, hey, hit that subscribe button, you know. You know, hit that like button for me and stuff. I I, I don't have, you know, a big community <laughs> right now, but I'm going to keep working on that. Keep tuning in. Uh, as you know, I don't start working on my uh, electric, <laughs> electric, electronic equipment, you know, to try to make these things better, you know. Audio wise, um, video wise, and stat wise, you know, trying to bring it, make it a little bit more smooth. But thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Peace out.